Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through um, how to determine density. This is for Project Lead the Way, uh, IED Activity 5.3. So there are a few things we want to talk about first. The first thing is what is density, and density is really just the amount of matter that's packed into a unit of volume. So you see here we have two boxes, those squares are supposed to be the same size, I don't know if they are the same size, but they're supposed to be the same size. You can see that there are quite obviously more things inside the left box, so we say that it is a higher density. The thing on the left has less material in it, so it's lower density. So notice it depends on how much matter you have and how much space you are taking up. That's what density is referring to. So a couple of things application-wise that might be interesting to you, you know, how, do, how does density come into play in real life? You know, if you've ever picked out a TV and you've noticed that we have these uh, full HD 1080p TVs versus the 4K Ultra versus the OLED, you know, what are they talking about with that? And one of the things that comes into mind is the pixel density. How many pixels do you have per square inch? And so this image, you can see the more pixels that you can pack into square inch, the, the higher the resolution is going to be. And of course, there are all sorts of applications here for this. You know, a phone actually has more pixel density, a higher pixel, dens pixel density. But that's because you're used, uh, you're, you're supposed to be a foot away whenever you're using a phone as opposed to six or seven feet away whenever you're using a TV. So a TV, whenever you get really close, actually doesn't look as good um, because of the pixel density and, and what it's built for, how it's supposed to be used. But it absolutely makes a difference in the picture quality. We also might see it in something like city planning. So the, the population of London, London is the most populous city in the world, 8.8 .8 million, I think, or someone think, something around there. But you can see from the charts that are here in front of you, compared to New York and Hong Kong, both are absolutely massive. But if you compare the population density, how closely packed together the people are, Hong Kong by far, by far, has more people per square kilometer than London or New York, which are actually bigger cities population-wise, just standard population. And that obviously has an effect. So if I'm going to be planning buildings for Hong Kong, we're going to have to think about ways to like build up, which is why you're going to see a lot of skyscrapers. We've got to fit a lot of people into a small area. So population density is another thing that we can look at. Or we could even talk about plastic usage. So you have different types of plastic. Some of those are high-density plastics and some are low-density plastics. And you can see the high-density plastics tend to have different uses than the low-density plastics. So the stuff that's stronger and more for like construction or plexiglass, that kind of stuff, that's going to be a low-density plastic versus like your sandwich bags, right? That's a different type of plastic. So the difference is humongous, okay? So we're going to focus on this last one, which is material usage. We're going to talk about measuring mass and volume and how we can use that to kind of f figure out what kind of material that we have. Okay, so we have this uh, little formula sheet that we've been using. The PLW formula sheet says in order to calculate density, we need to know the mass and we need to know the volume. Now, you will notice there are two uh, formulas here. And they're very similar to each other. It's either mass is equal to volume times density, which is right here, or we have weight is equal to volume times density. But notice in either case, it's volume times density is equal to something. And um, to be perfectly honest, PLTW kind of uses the terms mass and weight interchangeably. And for IED, we're just we're not going to get hung up on that. When you go to physics class later on, if I'm your physics teacher later on, we'll talk all about the difference between mass and weight. Um, but for here, what you need to know is how to calculate the density. In both cases, it's either mass divided by volume or it's weight divided by volume. Okay, so what that means, how do we measure the mass or how do we measure the weight? Well, we're going to use a digital scale. In fact, it's going to be that exact model you see on the screen. But the problem is the stuff that we're going to measure is going to be really small. So instead of using one sample, which would give us an inaccurate or rounded measurement, we're going to throw a bunch of things on the scale and find the average. So let's say that I had 10 marbles. You measure one marble, it's so little that the units are going to be rounded. It's going to give us an inaccurate answer. But if I could throw like 10 marbles on, and I found that those 10 marbles weighed 100 grams, then I could probably do some math and say, you know, each marble is probably about 10 grams, right? Find an average. Do note that you will probably have to convert units because the scale that we have only measures in things like grams and pounds and ounces, okay? So unit conversions will be part of our activity today. How about measuring volume? Well. If I have a very geometrical shape, like say this piece of wood that I have here, a rectangular piece of wood, I can measure the height, width, and depth, and then use geometric formulas to calculate the volume. So it could be something like this. I would take the width times the depth times the height, measure all three of those things, and I could calculate the volume with the simple geometry formula. Note on this that precision is important, so do not round those decimal places off, because if you take 8.328 and you round it to 8, you're going to get a drastically different volume in the end. Okay, so keep all those decimals. 
um, we can use the same process for spheres. So if I wanted to measure like the diameter of a marble, which is what I'm doing here, right? Notice it's going all the way across. I could then convert that diameter. I could cut it in half and I could put it in as R in this volume formula you see at the bottom. It's four thirds pi R cubed. Do note on that, by the way, that the radius is the only thing that is cubed. Okay, so you have to you have to cube the radius first, and then you can multiply it by 3.14, and then you can multiply it by four thirds. Okay, but the same process can be used. A simple geometry formula. That's all fine and dandy, but sometimes you get objects that aren't on the formula sheet. So what do we do there? For irregular objects, we're going to use fluid displacement. Okay, so let's say that we take the automobile blocks people out of our vehicle, and we want to know the volume of those four automobile blocks people put together. What I can do is I can put them into a graduated cylinder that's filled with water, and the water is going to rise as we put the objects in, right? And so what we can do is we can do this. We can use that, use the initial water recording. And by the way, notice it says read from the bottom of that little meniscus, that little curve shape. You're going to read the bottom of that, record that initial water level. Let's say that's at 10 milliliters. And then we're going to measure, after we put the samples in, what the final level is. And what the water displacement is, the change tells us the volume that the objects took up. So if it started at 10 and it ended at 25, the volume of those objects must have been 15. So that's water displacement and how we measure irregular objects. So we can use geometry for volume or we can use water displacement for volume. Two simple ways. Okay, so let's do a quick example then. What are you going to be asked to do? Well, Let's say that we were told that we have the density of an object that's 2.24 inches in diameter. It's a sphere. It's made of titanium, and it weighs 0.82 pounds. What's the density? Okay. Well, let's start off with this. What are we given here? 2.24 inch diameter. That's going to be used to calculate the radius, which then can be calculate, used to calculate with the 4 thirds power cubed formula, the volume. We also have a weight, which is 0.82 pounds. That's a weight and not a mass. So we can calculate the weight density using this formula here, okay? We're gonna start off with the volume, 2.24 inches for a diameter means we gotta cut it in half. We should have then, half of that is 1.12, okay? We're gonna take that and we're going to cube it. I don't know why it's going blank in between. We're gonna cube 2.24 cubic inches, excuse me. We're gonna take the 2.24 and cut it in half to get 1.12. We are going to cube that and then multiply by pi, then multiply by 4 thirds. And that ends up giving us a complete volume of that sphere of 5.88 cubic inches. Now what we can do with that figure is we can go back to our density formula. I do not know why it's going blank. That's weird. I can get this formula off the formula sheet and I can plug in the things that I know, which are the weight is 0.82 pounds and the volume is 5.88 cubic inches. Notice that that's been rearranged to get the D by itself, right? The, the density by itself. When I take 0.82 divided by 5.88, I'm going to end up with 0.14 pounds per cubic inch. So that is the weight density of the titanium sphere in this sample, okay? I also might be asked, okay, now, now that you know the density and you know the weight and you know the volume, how much volume would actually take up this particular sphere? Well, what volume would it displace? I could go through and I could use this formula and use the things that I've been given. If the weight was 0.82 pounds and the density is 0.14 pounds per cubic inch, notice that I could work backwards and I could solve for a volume of 5.86 cubic inches. Well, wait a second. They, they kind of already told us that already, right? Okay, so now, now that we know this though, what is that in milliliters, okay? I don't know why that title's going away. I should have worried about the animations before I made this video. But what I can do is I can do a unit conversion. It's gonna be a long unit conversion. I have to convert cubic feet to cubic inches first. So 1728 is actually 12 times 12 times 12 because there's 12 inches in a foot, okay? And I also need to convert from cubic feet or liters to cu cubic feet to liters, excuse me. And what that'll tell me is that I have 0.096 liters, if I do this correctly, and then that can be converted to 96 milliliters. So again, what I'm trying to say here is that this sheet is going to be very important whenever it comes time to do our unit conversions at the end. Now, luckily, we have Microsoft Excel, and we have a few other things that we're going to do. We're going to be using some reference sheets to try to compare then in our activity. I'm going to give you some samples of wood, and your job is to tell me what kind of wood is that. Is it birch? Is it oak? Is it pine? What is it, okay? But we need to be able to calculate mass and volume to measure those things, to use some simple math formulas to solve. And if you can do that, then you're going to be just fine in this lesson. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask.